Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, before I go into my presentation, I wish to register my sincere gratitude to Dr. Ashni Singh and his committed team at the Ministry of Finance for delivering an excellent budget to this nation. Steadfast against all challenges, resolute in building our one Guyana. Budget 2022 is the answer to the call by our Guyanese brothers and sisters to further strengthen and rebuild with a solid foundation that which was devoured and plundered under the previous APNU AFC administration. Mr. Speaker, in any democratic nation, it is the people who choose their government. And we in the PPPC recognize and understand that we were democratically elected by the people of this country, and we will not disappoint, but rather continue to deliver on our promises to ensure that the livelihoods and well-being of every Guyanese are preserved through the provision of policies, plans, and programs that will see their dreams and aspirations become a reality. Mr. Speaker, for the past two days, I sat in this honorable house, and all I have heard from the main opposition were incoherent utterances utterances of development. I'm yet to see, and I'm sure the people of this nation are still looking for the development that they were talking about. Mr. Speaker, we must never forget that it was under the previous APNU AFC failed administration the Because We Care cash grant was taken away from our children. 7,000 sugar workers were rendered jobless. Heavy tax burdens were placed on water, electricity, food items, building materials, data plan, mining equipment, and even the men operating the donkey cart and the horse cart were not spared from the APNU AFC monstrous tax menu they embarked on. Our senior citizens saw their water and light subsidies taken away while members of our disciplined services endured similar plight as their one month tax free bonus became a mere memory. Mr. Speaker, the APNU AFC coalition continued on their path of destruction of progress and development by firing 2,000 of my fellow Amarin brothers and sisters, CSOs, taking away their very right of earning an income and a decent life. Mr. Speaker, to further add to the hopelessness and the agony we were placed in under the previous administration, even our freedom of choice. Yes, our very free will that we so comfortably enjoy as Guyanese came under threat and was trampled upon as the harrowing events surrounding the March 2nd, 2020 elections unfolded in plain sight and on camera where the incautious and brazen-faced attempt to alter the results of an election and prevent our people from electing a government of their choice. Five long months passed while we were placed on our knees as our democracy was under siege by the very members sitting in the opposition today. Mr. Speaker, we saw, we know, we lived and do not want to relive the series of events that we were forced to endure under the previous government. Hence, I implore my fellow Guyanese and especially the younger generation to never, ever in your lifetime entrust your well-being, your livelihood, your pride and dignity as a Guyanese and your right to choose in the hands of an untrustworthy and careless bunch as those sitting in the opposite side, of course, with the exemption of the Honorable Member, Mr. Schumann. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I would like to take this opportunity once again to register my sincere gratitude to every single Guyanese, both at home and in the diaspora, who stood up for democracy in those, long, those five long months we were held hostage as a nation by the previous APNU AFC administration, who has now rightfully taken their positions in the opposition seats. 
and will age gracefully as we on this side of the house continue to lead this country on the path of progress and development. Mr. Speaker, as we examine budget 2022, we will see that contrary to the narrative dispelled by members of the opposite side of this house, that this budget lacks vision and substance. We will see that all sectors within our country were catered for, as we are not a takeaway government, but rather give back to the people government and increase tenfold that which was devoured. Mr. Speaker, as I take a look at health, Mr. Speaker, the injection of a 552.9 billion gallon dollars will see the health sector being allocated 73.2 billion gallon dollars and will cover all areas in health, such as the National COVID-19 Response Program, where healthcare workers will continue to have access to adequate personal protective equipment. Our vaccination program will be further strengthened and provisions will be made for an additional 260,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccine booster shots and for those pending to be vaccinated. This is progress and more progress. Mr. Speaker, for the first time, our country will benefit from a major boom in the health sector as $16.1 billion will go towards the construction of healthcare facilities, which includes a state-of-the-art pediatric and maternal hospital. Upgrading of the West Demerara and Bartica Regional Hospitals. Also, we will see six new additional hospitals in regions two, three, four, five, and six. This speaks of progress. Mr. Speaker, a total of one billion Guyana dollars will be allocated to ensure the upgrading of health centers all across Guyana, as patients will be able to have access to health facilities within their catchment area. This is more progress. Our National Referral Hospital will see a total of 39 million Guyana dollars go towards the extension of the mental health ward. Mr. Speaker, under the APU AFC regime, the health system was heavily plagued by drug shortages. This year, we will continue to right this wrong by injecting 17.9 billion Ghana dollars to procure supplies and eradicate incidences of drug shortages. This speaks of progress. Mr. Speaker, every single dialysis patient in Guyana will benefit from finances of up to $600,000 per annum through a dialysis support system. And this definitely shows our strong support to the healthcare system in Guyana. To our youths, Mr. Speaker, we on the side of the house recognize that our youths are the, some of the most country, of our country's most valuable asset, our future, and therefore a total of $841.3 million has been allocated in this budget and we'll see $85 million go towards the expansion of youth entrepreneurship and mentorship program, which will accommodate 85 grants in 2022. This speaks of progress. Mr. Speaker, support for the vulnerable. Mr. Speaker, our government will continue to support vulnerable groups and thus the monthly public assistance program will see an increment from $12,000 to $14,000 and will allow over 18,000 persons to benefit from same thus providing a total of $432 million in disposable income to its beneficiaries. Mr. Speaker, our senior citizen will see an increase of all paid pension from $25,000 to $28,000 and thus affording 65,000 pensioners a total of $2.3 billion of disposable income. Mr. Speaker, the PPC government will always ensure that our indigenous brothers and sisters continue to enjoy equal access to development as every other citizen of Guyana. And therefore, $3.1 billion will go towards core Armenian development programs. 
$5.6 to $1.6 million will see the acceleration of the land titling program, which achieve a target of 20 certificates of titles. Mr. Speaker, another $660 million will go towards training of 650 CSOs to serve in 220 communities across all regions in Guyana. Equitable access to education and skills will see a total of 31,295 students benefit from the Because We Care cash grant as $93.3 million will be expended across indigenous communities to make this a reality. Mr. Speaker, I now turn my attention to some of the major developments in region number three. And looking at the health sector so far, Mr. Speaker, we have seen a 50 bed capacity COVID-19 unit commissioned at the West Demerara Regional Hospital in November 2021. This will provide care for COVID-19 patients, not only Region 3, but also from Regions 1, 7, and any other region that we may need to, that we may need to add to this unit. As also, we must also note that this unit was constructed with sections to cater for maternal patients, children, and also an intensive care unit. Mr. Speaker, the Lenora, Hospital, the Lenora Cottage Hospital are just days away of being commissioned and handed over as a smart hospital facility, which will see the reintroduction of services of a 25-bed capacity maternal unit a digitized x-ray system, laboratory, ultrasonography, dental services, eye care, voluntary counseling testing, increased bed capacity of the accident and emergency department, amongst others. All of this will provide services for over 18,000 residents in region number three. Mr. Speaker, our government has also ensured the removal of thousands of expired drugs hoarded at the Tushin Health Center, the Lenora Hospital, and other health facilities across region number three, which like many other areas were neglected under the previous APNU AFC government and did not see the removal of same as important. Mr. Speaker, the non-functional X-ray machine at the Leguan Cottage Hospital has been restored and is now offering services to residents, as this too was a victim of neglect under the previous APNU AFC government. Mr. Speaker, our robust COVID-19 vaccination program has seen to date a 56.6 percentage increase of eligible persons being vaccinated against this dreaded COVID-19 disease. Mr. Speaker, even in a pandemic, we continue to offer interspecialty medical outreaches to residents of riverine areas such as Caria Caria, Bonisica, Saxacali, among others. Mr. Speaker, the newly constructed $1 billion state-of-the-art Westminster Secondary School now accommodates approximately 1,000 students from across Region 3 and is fully equipped with 32 classrooms, language, physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, home economics, agriculture, science, and IT laboratories dance studio, a theater room, all forms part of the state-of-the-art secondary school. Mr. Speaker, a total of 875 young people have benefited from the Goal Online Scholarship in 2022 and will see hundreds more benefit in 2022 in region number three. Mr. Speaker, our government ensured that every farmer affected by the recent floods across Region 3 benefited from the flood relief grant. Mr. Speaker, for the very first time, residents of Lost and Rust in the Parfait Harmony area has been afforded the opportunity to access light, drainage, and portable water in their communities. Already, Mr. Speaker, our hard-working Ministers of Housing, the Honorable Susan Rodriguez and the Honorable Colin Crow, have ensured that house lots 
were allocated to residents, and today 2,000 residents have gained access to house lots in areas such as Cornelia Ida, Stewartville, Metamil, Zord, Zealot, and other areas. This, Mr. Speaker, is in keeping with our promise to provide 50,000 house lots to all residents across Guyana in our first term in office. I will remember you will need an extension. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to ask for the Honourable Member to have five minutes to conclude her presentation. Thank you, Honourable Minister. Honourable Member, you may continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I invite any one of the Honourable Members on the opposite side of this House to visit a random area in Region Number 3, and you will see clear evidence that the PPC government is working for everyone, not only for our supporters, as you have claimed. Every single Guyanese will benefit from our projects, plans, and programs that we have set out for this country. Mr. Speaker, we in the PPP will continue to work assiduously towards the development of every sector in our goal to achieving a one Guyana that will solidify the foundation of our nation's human resources, our economic growth, our dignity as a people, our democracy, our culture, and every valuable asset that defines us as a unique Guyanese nation. Mr. Speaker, over the next few months, the air in regions one to 10 will be filled with the smell of fresh paint and asphalt as roads and buildings rise, such as schools, hospitals, and hotels, will hug the skyline of this beautiful nation of ours. Once desolated and garbage-ridden areas will see streets and roads traversing its space. A smile on the faces of our farmers, children, senior citizens, and Guyanese as a whole will tell the story of the level of commitment we hold as a government towards the development of what this nation under a PPC government. A new era beckons as budget 2022 will see the manifestation of visionary, inclusive, transformational, and people-centered development all across Guyana. Mr. Speaker, I therefore have no reservation in commending Budget 2022 was passed to this Honorable House. I thank you.